Oh, almost there. What do you say we make this thing loop, huh? Let's go! When we started this series, we mentioned that we needed this asset to be square for social. We've been working in square this whole time, so you could just stop here. But it's more engaging if it loops, right? Any ideas on how you might transition between Artboard 4 and Artboard 1 to make this thing loop? Now, I know this is going to surprise you, but the way that I'm going to execute this is by taking something that we've already done and repurposing it to apply it here. Are you noticing a pattern? So let's hop into Artboard 3 and grab a background, player name, and our alpha mat. And I'm going to grab the pink background. And if I go into Artboard 4 and paste, the reason I grabbed the pink background is because, again, we're following the same color pattern, pink, dark blue, light blue. So pink is next. And I just need to reorder these because we know they come in backwards. So highlights, bring it under controller. And I'm gonna go back into my main comp here because I want to decide, I'm gonna put the CTI where I want this transition to start. So let's arbitrarily just put it here and we'll tweak if it needs to be tweaked. All right, let's go back to Artboard 4. And I'm just gonna move all these layers up to my CTI. And the reason I went into the main comp is because it's gonna tell me where, in relation to the beginning of this comp, where that CTI is in the main comp. So that's helpful. So because Artboard 1 is all circles, the ball, the center circle, I actually wanna make this a circular transition as opposed to the rounded square transition we used here in board three. So let's go ahead and command or control click on the twirl down and we want the roundness. Let's just put that at a thousand so that it just starts as a circle and by the time it gets to as big as it needs to get, it maintains its circle. And you'll also notice that if I hit EE to pull up my expression, my color stayed the same because I have the same controller in this comp as I had in Artboard 3. And my expression is referencing this comp. So it all ported over just fine. So if I hit U, I need to make this pink circle big enough to cover my whole comp. Let's just call that 1600. So it's gonna fly open, great. And we're gonna duplicate this, put it over the top of the player name Phil, one, two, three, and delete this last one. Make sure we turn off this eyeball since it's a mat. And if I hold shift it's and drag that, it's gonna close that off as well, just to keep things clean and tidy. So if you also remember back in Artboard 3 when we had the player cut out, I'm gonna zoom out. If I go into my player cutout, hit U. We did a little anticipation here on the Y position where she went down before she took off, just like we do when we jump. The anticipation, I'm gonna port over into this comp as well. So let's go to the beginning of where the circle starts here. Go back 12 frames. And on the stats background, if I hit S, remember we put the anchor point at the bottom. So if I try and scale this down, it's gonna scale around that anchor point, which is not what I want here. So what I can do is highlight my stats background and I, hit, I can hit Command or Control Shift and D to split the layer. And then on this layer, it's like a new layer, I can hit Y to and hold Command or Control to snap my anchor point to the center of that background. So now when I hit S and play with the scale, it's gonna do what I want it to do. So I can turn off the stopwatch and start over. And let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. I just want to take this down to 110. Just a small just a small amount to anticipate. And then I'm gonna make sure this just gets beyond my comp here. 
So let's highlight all those, hit F9, and go into my scale, go into my graph. And let's pull that back. And we want it to hang here like we've done. So it's gonna pull back and then it's gonna shoot out and really introduce that circle transitional element. Let's go back to my stats and we're gonna have the stats do a little follow the leader here, a little overlapping animation. And then I'm, I'm gonna offset it. So let's set the first keyframe, hit K to get to the next keyframe. And let's call this maybe 88. So it kind of maintains the same size as the background. And then we want this to also shoot out. Doesn't need to be that big. Just needs to start because this pink circle is gonna overtake it eventually. So it just needs to appear like it's, it's scaling up. So if we hit F9 and go back into our graph, I'm also gonna reveal my graph in the last one so I can try and line this up quickly. Two, I'm just clicking on these so I can copy where they landed because they're exactly in the same spot. So this one hit 18 and that one hit between 14 and 15. So between 14 and 15 and this one hit 18. There we go. And that works because these numbers are fairly close, so I can see them both in the same graph. All right, and now that I have those, I'm gonna highlight them and hold Alt or Option and push them off maybe two frames. So it's like the stats background starts to scale down and then it impacts the stats. And it's trailing just enough so that there's a little bit of a, almost like a parallax motion happening there. I do want those to be scaling up a little bit further before the pink circle comes in though. So let's push the pink circle back two frames or so. That looks like it might feel good. We can always play with it after we see what it looks like in the main comp. So the other thing I wanna do is duplicate this pink background and put it at the top. And I'm gonna go into color and highlight my controller. Flying through this now because we've done this so many times. I think you can keep up and figure out figure it out if for some reason I'm moving too fast. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is gonna be a dummy layer. Let's just rename it blue. And I'm gonna use this in for the wraparound in the first board so that I can start the transition over there. So let's go ahead and copy this and go back into our primary comp here. And I'll show you what, what I mean by using it as a dummy layer. So the first frame that it pops in, I'm gonna hold Commander Control Shift and D to split my layers. And then I'm gonna take this Artboard 4 to the bottom and put it at the very, very beginning. I don't need that much on it because if I solo this, I want that pink to stay in the background. There we go. And I'm gonna paste my this blue circle in Artboard 1. so I can get my bearings and have something consistent to measure it, measure it against, right? I'm gonna turn off this background because we're changing it up a little bit and I already have one, so there's no sense in duplicating efforts there. All right, so the same thing, this is shooting out. And what I want to happen is I want this circle, just like we did in this artboard, how the solid color comes in and then the text follows. I want to do the same thing here. So let's go ahead and duplicate. 
put it above my court lines background alpha mat and push it to three three frames and then let's go ahead and duplicate it again put it over the center line and set that to alpha set the center line to alpha so you can see it's going to make it feel like everything is coming onto the screen like it's getting revealed and it's really just secondary animation here to reinforce what's going on and highlight the fact that the ball is getting tossed up in the air. And then same thing with my center circle, duplicate, put it over the top and make sure this is an alpha. So let's highlight the center circle, the center line and the court lines and just bring those back to line up here so that we can see it a little bit better visually. Not necessary because it's an alpha mat, so the alpha is only, the, the layer is only gonna appear where there is a solid blue circle behind it. And I also need to pull the ball back to line up with that as well. I think I might want the ball to appear there maybe a frame or two beforehand so it feels like it's getting shot up into the air. So one of the first things you see to draw your attention, and there's a lot of contrast here too. So that helps. All right, let's go back and see where we stand here. Frame one. And if I, so this is my reference point. This is what I was talking about. I want this blue to be the same as this blue. You see how much bigger this one is? So what I need to do is push this up. I did two frames. Maybe just one. There we go. Okay, now it's identical. All right, we're in good shape there. So I can go into Artboard 4 and just turn this blue circle off because it served its purpose. And it's opening up. That ball might be sitting there one frame too many. Let's go back in. I guess it, it can start there. All right. And that accomplishes what we set out to do here. So let's go ahead and see what everything looks like when it's looping. All right, there's, some, there's still some things that I wanna fix, but you now have the recipe for what this should look like. And I'd love to see you go ahead and make it your own.